now that we've got this understanding of independent events, we can answer questions like this. Which of these are the most likely sequence from Tosca Fair coins 16 times? This one where we get 16 tails. And this one where we get ah, kind of a, almost like a, a random sequence of heads and tails. Now, of course, people who don't understand probability or haven't seen a lecture like this will tend to answer this question that B is the most likely. It looks more typical of the kind of sequence that you expect from a fair coin. But of course, the answer is that if it's a truly fair coin and the probability of a tower is exactly the same as the probability of a head, then the probability of getting either of those sequences is exactly the same. It's just a half times a half times a half 16 times because each successive coin toss is independent of the previous one. So these are independent events, and so the probability of either sequence is 1 over 2 to the power of 16, which is that number here. In reality, as an aside here, for most coins, actually B is the most likely one to crop up, but that's, that's something to discuss separately. Now, in order to formally now, in order to actually provide a formal rigorous definition of independent events, we have to introduce the crucial notion of conditional probability. And indeed, conditional probability is what's central to the Bayesian approach to probability. So consider the experiment of selecting a card from a full pack of 52 playing cards, and let A be the event, the card is an ace. Now, as there are four aces in a pack of cards, we can conclude on the basis of what we've already seen so far that the probability of A is 4 over 52 because there are 52 elementary events corresponding to each of the cards, four of those are aces. Now suppose we run the experiment again and let B be the event, the second card is an ace. So we're now running the experiment of selecting a card from a full pack twice and observing whether we get two aces. Now, what's the probability of B? Now, it depends on whether or not we replaced the first card that we selected. If we did, and we shuffled the pack, then A and B are independent events. And so the probability of B is going to be the same as the probability of A. It's 4 over 52. But if we didn't replace the card, then B is clearly dependent on the event A. In fact, if A happened, I, if we did select an ace, when we first selected the card, then the probability of B must be 3 over 51, because there'd only be 51 cards left, of which only three are aces. Now, to make clear that the probability of B is conditional on A in this case, we would write this as, this bar means that, that B is conditioned on A. So the probability of B given A is equal to 3 over 51 in the case where we don't replace the card. If we do replace the card, as we've already seen, which is 4 over 52. Now, this is just an intuitive introduction to conditional probability. To do things properly, we have to introduce another law, probability law 4. Before presenting it, let's just think about the same pack of cards example. Where A represents the third card is an ace, first card is an ace, and B, the second card is an ace. And we wish to compute the probability of A and B. Now, we already know that if we replace the card and shuffle, the events are independent. And so, for independent events, we can conclude that the probability of A and B is the product of the two probabilities. So, that would be 4 over 52 times 4 over 52. But if we didn't replace the first card, then the probability of A and B, we've already seen intuitively, is the probability of getting first getting the A, which is 4 over 52, times the probability of getting a B, given that we got an A first time, which is 3 over 51. And that means that in practice, what we've found, what we've discovered, kind of like almost empirically, this is what we've observed, is that the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B given A. Now, providing that probability of A is not zero, we can rearrange this formula, and this is where we get probability law for. Now, that is now a law. We don't need to prove it. We don't even need to justify it. That is how we are defining conditional probability. The conditional probability of an event B given event A is defined as 
the probability of A and B divided by the probability of A. Now, although we've explained why this works, we actually cannot prove it from the other probability laws. That's why formally it's defined as a law. It's the definition of conditional probability. And that allows us to formally define two events, A and B, as independent. We say they're independent if the probability of A is equal to the probability of A given B, or equivalently, the probability of B is equal to the probability of B given A. That's our formal definition of independent events. So, although we introduced independence informally, here's the formal definition. This conditional probability formula is sometimes also said to be Bayes' theorem. Well, it actually isn't quite Bayes' theorem, but it is what you need to prove Bayes' theorem. As a matter of interest, what we've seen so far already leads us to conclude that most mundane events are actually miraculous. Well, we've seen that if you toss a coin 16 times and record the particular sequence you observed, the probability of having got that particular sequence was unbelievably unlikely. So even though it's inevitable you're going to get some sequence, every sequence is, is, is unlikely. So just imagine shuffling a deck of cards and then revealing that they were in this sort of perfect order, ace of spades, two, three, etc., all the way through the perfect sequence, what we call the perfect card sequence. Now the probability of that sequence is, well, it's the probability that we get the ace of spades first, which is 1 over 52, times the probability that we get the two of spades second, given that we got the ace of spades first, well, that's 1 over 51, etc. So all the way through, and that gives us the number 1 over 52 factorial. And this denominator here is a large number. In fact, that number is greater than the number of particles in the universe. So the probability of getting that particular sequence is incredibly, unbelievably unlikely. But if you think about it, whatever sequence is revealed has got the same probability. It, 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 and therefore, every sequence you get is just as much an unpredictable miracle as that sequence. Conversely, as we'll see in other aspects of the course. Many events that people believe are incredible miracles are actually completely mundane and predictable, but that's not something that I'm going to address right now. What we do need to consider before we get onto Bayes' theorem is the idea of marginal probability. So in general, the probability of an event is going to be conditioned on more than one other event. So for example, consider the experiment of running a screening test for a particular virus. Let E be the event positive test result. Now, whether E is true is dependent on the state of the person being tested. So in the simplest case, let's just consider the person's state as having two elementary events. H1, the person has the virus, and H2, the person doesn't have the virus. Now, we might have data that shows that the probability of a positive test result, given the person has the virus, is 0.99. So there's a 99% chance that the test is positive if the person has the virus. It's a pretty accurate test for those who have the virus. We might also find that the probability that you get a positive test result if the person doesn't have the virus is also fairly accurate, 95%, but that means there's a 5% chance of a false positive. So a 5% chance personal test positive if they don't have the virus. Suppose we also know that one in a thousand people has the virus. So the probability of H1 is 0.001. Although we've got the conditional probabilities for E given H1 and H2, we're also interested to know the overall probability of E. So we want to know, before we've seen any person, what's the probability that they're going to test positive? This is called the unconditional probability of E, or also the marginal probability, and that's simply written as the probability of E.